Gautam Shah joins us. Let's take a conversation forward. Uh, Gautam, what do you make of uh, <coughs> the Friday's price action? I mean, the FNO expiry in the month of Feb was not a great month. Markets kept on making new highs, but it, there was no follow-up. But on Friday, what we saw, clean breakout, a new high, a lot of follow-up. Are we in for a smart 1000 plus Nifty rally after Friday's price action? Well, good morning. I think uh, for the last couple of months, the market has really been in consolidation mode. I think the whole of January and the whole of uh, February, pretty much, uh, you had the Nifty in a sort of a 2 to 2.5% kind of a range. But, uh, you know, mind you, there has been a lot of internal correction at the marketplace. Just to share a data point, uh, only 60% of the stocks in the NSE 500 have been trading above the 50-day moving average. And only 50% of the stocks in the NSE mid-cap, small-cap 400 have been trading above the 50-day moving average just goes to show that the headline indices is, are not a good indicator of the kind of internal correction that the market has seen. So clearly the market is looking a lot more fitter, steadier and healthier. And it does seem as if we are going to build up on the gains. The studies are looking relaxed, whether on the breadth studies or the traditional studies. And the chances of the Nifty gradually moving towards 20 to 800 is pretty high. But I don't think it's going to be a runaway rally. You will see, keep seeing these dips from time to time. The trajectory is still up. Support levels are very clear in the form of 21, 800, 900. And I think the whole of March should go off well. Uh, that's the takeaway from the charts. And also when I look at the global markets, I get the confidence that the US market strength is only going to aid India. Are we in for a pre-election rally? Uh, do you think next two months that mood point, uh, the pre-election rally could be the mood point? Well, in some sense, the uh, election event is a non-event. So I don't think the market is going to be overexcited about getting into the elections or the election results. I think the domestic liquidity angle of 19,000 crores coming in every single month, India becoming one of the best performing uh, markets in the world, bond yields likely to fall. I think all of these triggers are in itself a reason for the markets to do well. But as I've been maintaining all along, I don't think the Nifty is going to gallop. I think you are going to see a lot of themes and a lot of sectors do well, wherein metals, IT, pharma have been on top of our list. So the Nifty could see a measured move, but outside of the Nifty, I think you're going to see some special moves. Gautam, hi, morning. Wanted to understand what do you think is going to lead the index higher from here? Because we've seen a charged up move from ONGC, the entire energy pack. Then, of course, there's big boy LNT. Reliance has already made it to 3000. And uh, banks as well in bits and star are doing their bid. I say, say bank SBI in particular. Well, for me, it's Reliance Industries. I think this is a stock which was in a sort of a range for about 18 months. Uh, thereafter, once it took took past uh, 2750, I think uh, a lot of the triggers on the weekly and the monthly charts became really, really solid. And I do see a 10 to 15 percent rally on Reliance from current levels, which will have a huge bearing, you know, on the Nifty. And I, I guess it will, in some sense, keep the Nifty protected. So I think the leadership will come from Reliance. I think there's a lot more upside there. Followed by the IT space, which have been in has been in hibernation mode for the last 10 days, but the setup remains super solid. And I do see a 40,000 coming on that index as well. And banks, I think we've come to a point where maybe the underperformance could end. Our favorite remains in the form of SBI, which has been our view all along. But I think even some of the private banks like ICICI Bank and maybe an SDFC Bank at 1400 could see a bit of a bounce. So leadership can actually come from multiple places because you have IT, Reliance and banks, all three looking good on the charts. Very interesting and a lot of uh, follow-up questions for you. Firstly, what do you think is the next foreseeable target on Reliance? And from a longer term perspective as well, say another six months down the line, and I'm you know deliberately calling uh, six months long term, what do you now foresee on the charts for Reliance? And uh, the point that you made about IT, within IT, is it going to be an across the board move or do you think it's going to be specific sec uh, stocks which are going to make the move within IT? Well, Aisha, it's actually good that you called six months long term because, to be honest, the world is changing every six months. And, and I think you'll have to play these six, six month cycles multiple times instead of really thinking five years where I, I think there are just too many dynamics at play. But having said that, I think Reliance is looking good for about 30 to 50, 3300. So that's not very large in percentage terms. But given the kind of weightage that single stock has in the market, 
I think it's 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 large in that context, and I don't see too many large cap stocks that could give you a clean 10, 15 percent kind of a move. So that's the kind of upside we are looking at. We are not working with very lofty targets for many of the large cap stocks because I think a lot of the positives are already in the price. But uh, you know, in terms of the IT space, I think uh, mid cap IT has been doing very well. So we've been liking mass tech, LTTS, emphasis there. And I think the run-up will continue. But mid-cap IT is very expensive at these prices. So I think it's a little difficult to make serious commitment at these levels. But large-cap IT, I think, is the bigger opportunity. So I see a 20% move in Wipro. I see a 15% move in TCS. HCL Tech has been a star performer. So I think large-cap IT pack, I'm a lot more comfortable committing capital at these levels. Okay, so 15 to 20% kind of opportunities on Wipro, TCS, etc. But you know, there's one theory always in the market, Gotham, that whatever has underperformed will likely turn around. And the perfect setup seems to be the case for FMCG. That has been underperforming. Do you get, see it getting out of the hibernation anytime soon? Or is it going to be a long drawn consolidation for that one? You know, I, actually, the kind of market that we've been in, it's basically winners that have done well. You know, underperformers have underperformed. I think case in point being HDFC Bank, Bajaj Finance, and Asian Paints. I mean, uh, they were the star performers of, of the market some time back. And now for almost two and a half years, they have been underperforming. But coming to your point about FMCG, I do think that this consolidation is close to coming to an end. Uh, I do like ITC. You know, it's been my favorite for a couple of years now when we identified it very early on. And now post this six month long consolidation, I think at 400, 420, there is not much to lose in ITC. In fact, the chances of ITC actually gradually moving towards 500 and beyond is pretty high. So yes, at a 22,000 index, if you're looking at trades with reasonable valuations and good risk reward, FMCG and particularly ITC definitely falls in place. 410 rupees. So can I say ITC and Reliance Gotham could be stock of the years? I mean, what was Tata Motors last year and Indian hotels a year ago? Uh, stock of the year for me is SBI Nikunj. I think I've been maintaining this for a while now, and I do see uh, SBI gradually moving towards four figures and well beyond, and that would be followed by uh, Reliance and ITC. But you don't see any evidence that this market, which has started off decently well, as the year unwinds, the base effect could kick in and the market could actually give you a negative return. Because if you're looking at Reliance moving higher, ITC doing okay, SBI doing well, uh, IT coming back, that means we are in for a good double digit gain by the time year unwinds. Absolutely. I think that looks likely. In fact, if I have to take a medium term view, I wouldn't be surprised if the Nifty gradually moved towards a level of 25,400. So that's more of our uh, long medium term to long term uh, target, which we give out to our clients. So 25,400 is our number for people, you know, who can actually live through small corrections from time to time. But let's not forget global markets. I mean, you are in a global equity bull trend. I mean, look at some of the European markets, uh, the, the French market, German market, lifetime highs, US markets doing well, Russell 2000 coming back strongly, Asian markets turning around from important supports. Look at China and Hong Kong, good rebound in the last 10 days. So I think this is quite interconnected the way I see. And given India's own local positives, a global positive environment makes it much more easier for India to do well, knowing the fact that liquidity is strong and elections is a non-event. Gautam, I wanted to understand, you know, since you did tip off on uh, global markets, do you think it's one of those rising tide phenomena which is sort of lifting all boats? Because, uh, you know, uh, the Japanese Nikkei for this morning has breached that 40,000 mark. And like you said, the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ are all in ship shape. What's your reading on the charts of Dow and Japan if you take a look at that? Well, you know, Japan, what happened last week is an event in itself because it's taken out the high that was, I think, last hit in 1989. And it's been a case study for a lot of uh, people in the market that how a certain large market cannot make new highs for such a long period of time. But I think the charts are in great shape and I do see the uh, Nikkei market another, you know, go up another 10-12% at least, maybe if not more. And in the US market setup, I think I, I just love the way some of the top stocks are placed. I mean, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Amazon, 
Apple, all great charts, and I think there is more money to be made there. But the real trigger will come from the Russell 2000, because like India, the complaint was that the small caps were not doing well in the US. And now the Russell 2000 index is at a 52 week high in the US. And that index is likely to see a buildup of gains, which will keep the equity market stable. And if the Fed were to cut rates over the next three, four months, I think it's only going to aid the equity market value. Things are looking up, but since you have to put, let's say, more money towards technology, banking, other select pockets as well, where do you take the money out of Gotham? Um, do you think PSU's real estate, they've run their course? Yeah, I think so. Some of these uh, sectors are quite overbought. So real estate, capital goods, auto, uh, uh, and select PSUs are places where I would take the money off the table. I'll take those profits and move to some of the other spaces in the market. You know, also, I think we should not forget gold. You know, I've been a very big bull on gold, and I made the point early this year that gold could be the trade of the year. And with what gold has done in the last one week, I do believe that a run up towards $2,500 is coming on gold. In fact, it could be benchmark equity returns, you know, sometime this year. So uh, we remain very positive on gold. And if you're booking profits in some of these, you know, uh, names which have done well, commit yourself into gold. And coming back to equity markets, the two other spaces that we like are metals. I think metals could be the trade of the year. We like all the top stocks followed by pharma, which is seeing a very nice structural uptrend. And I think there is more gains there as well. So with the exception of capital goods and autos, I guess the rest of the market is looking strong. So one should one, let's say, sell an l &T, Should one, let's say, sell a ABB, a BHL and simply move it out to banks and IT? See, if your view is three years, I don't think you should be selling these stocks because, you know, they remain structural stories. Uh, but if you're looking at outperforming the market over the next three to six months, yes, these stocks can be sold because I think they are a little over extended in the near term and might not do well. You know what happened with ITC six months back, you know, when it was at 450, there was so much talk about it. Six months did nothing, huge opportunity cost. So in that sense, I think it's an it's a sell. But for a long term structural, you know, uh, 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 investor, I mean, still no reason to sell an LNT because I think it's it's a great, great proxy to the India story. Thanks, Gautam, for joining us today. Appreciate you making time and speaking with us.